Hi, we're here with Alex Lidoff from EPC, and what we have behind us is a demonstration of a brand new product concerning a, a gate driver integrated onto the same chip as an EGAN transistor. Now, driving the gate of, an e of a power transistor is kind of a big deal because it's easy to screw it up because of the parasitic elements. Um, why don't you tell us what the problem is and why you integrated the gate driver onto the same chip as the power transistor? So, you know, EGAN transistors are just blazing fast. They switch in a nanosecond or less. And uh, designers have had to buy an external gate drive made in silicon to drive that GAN device. And because it's so fast, very often the parasitic inductances will either slow it down or create uh, noisy uh, ringing, and, and it becomes a difficult thing for the designer. So we integrated the drive electronics right onto the GAN transistor chip. In this case, the 2112 is a 200 volt device with an integrated driver. And here we have a power supply, a CPIC converter, that is actually powering this computer directly. Uh, and it is the GAN device is being powered right off of a little CMOS logic chip. Hmm. So it doesn't take any driver, just a very low current logic signal, and you can get uh, megahertz out of it. In this case, we're driving it with about a five nanosecond rise time. Uh, and uh, we can drive these things at, at six and seven megahertz for the wireless power world. Hmm. And we see that, that uh, integrating more and more functions on GAN, which is pretty easy to do, eliminates a lot of the design time from the engineer. I can understand that because it's a simpler circuit, but um, does the fact that you've integrated the gate driver onto the same chip as the, the transistor um, eliminate the need to compensate for some of those parasitic elements? It eliminates the parasitics. Okay. The parasitics that were problematic were in the board itself, the PC board, because of uh, copper traces. So it really does just get rid of a problem. Huh. Um, can you quantify uh, the number of components you would need with a, when your gate driver is integrated on the same chip as the transistor versus when you have to do it separately? Well, you eliminate one basic component and about three passives that, that three are needed to, to work with it. And the basic component is a silicon-based driver IC. Uh, and now just direct from logic to our devices and it's an insensitive uh, signal. So you don't have any problems with bounce or, or um, overshoot. Now you've also got another chip where you've got two transistors and two gate drivers. Um, what kind of a configuration can you do with that one? Yeah, so that's a 150 volt, two power FETs and two drivers on it, and that's really meant for differential mode class E amplifiers, such as you might find in a wireless power system, and we have a demonstration of that right behind us, uh, where this tiny little one and a half millimeter by two and a half millimeter uh, uh, chip is, is powering a class three wireless power transmitter. Hmm. And it does it with just, just a few components. Interesting, how does that, uh, what do you think that's going to do for the design of wireless power? So, you know, wireless power is, has been taking a long time to be adopted. We've seen right. Qi, which is inductive, and that's really about charging batteries. Uh, with, with resonant magnetic, it's really about eliminating power cords. And so EPC has developed a family of ICs, as well as a whole new antenna technology that allows you to make large area tables that are all wirelessly enabled, so anything you put on it gets powered up. So truly, you're eliminating power cords, not just charging things, you're also powering them. Alex, I can't wait to see that in my own home. It sounds wonderful. It's coming soon. <laughs>